and welcome back to Attack of the Jack-O-Lanterns, the Goosebumps novel. I have a drink this time. Hopefully that doesn't bother anybody. Um, so getting back into it, chapter 8. I was standing right next to the phone when it rang. The harsh buzz nearly made me jump out of my skin. Was I a little tense? Yes. I grabbed the phone in the middle of the first ring. Hello? I heard a familiar voice on the other end. Hi, Drew. It's Tabby. Tabby, I cried. I decided she was calling to find out what time the party started. The party starts at 8, I said. But if you and Lee... That's why I'm calling, Tabby interrupted. Lee and I can't come tonight. Huh? The phone dropped out of my hand. It clattered to the floor. I dove to pick up the receiver, stumbled, and nearly knocked the whole table over. What? What did you say? I demanded. Lee and I can't come, Tabby repeated the chilling words. We're going to Lee's cousin's instead. His cousin gets to trick-or-treat until midnight. He does four different neighborhoods. He promised we'll get bags and bags of candy. Sorry. But Tappy, I protested weakly. Sorry, she said. See you. Bye. She hung up. I let out a hoarse wail and sank to my knees on the floor. What's wrong? Walker demanded. They, they, they... I couldn't get the words out. My three friends huddled around me. Walker tried to pull me to my feet, but my head was spinning. I didn't want to stand up. They're not coming, I finally managed to choke out. Not coming. Oh, Walker replied softly. Shane and Shauna shook their heads glumly, but didn't say a word. We all stayed frozen in place, stunned, too miserable to talk. Thinking about all the work, all the planning, and all the hard work. A whole year of planning and hard work. I'm not going to cry, I told myself. I feel like crying, but I'm not going to. I climbed shakily to my feet and glanced at the couch. What is that? I shrieked. Everyone turned and saw what I saw. A huge, ugly hole in one of the brown leather couch cushions. Oh no, Shanna wailed. I was playing with a ball of green slime. I must have dropped it onto the couch when I stood up. It it burned a hole in the cushion. Quick, cover it up before Mom and Dad see, I started. Of course, Mom and Dad came strolling into the living room. How's it going, Dad asked. All ready for your guest? I crossed my fingers and prayed they wouldn't see the huge hole in the couch. Good heavens, what happened to the couch? Mom shrieked. It took Mom and Dad a long time to get over the ruined couch. It took me even longer to get over the ruined party. That's how it went last Halloween. Two years. Two years of ruined Halloweens. And now it's a year later. Halloween time again. This year we have twice as much reason to get revenge on Tabby and Lee. If only we had a plan. This year I'm a space princess, Tabby announced. She had her blonde hair piled high once again with the same rhinestone tiara in it. And she wore the same long lacy dress. The same costume as two years ago. But to add to the outer space look... Tabby had painted her face bright green. She always has to be a princess, I thought bitterly. Green or not, she's still a princess. Lee showed up in a cape and tights and said he was Superman. He said it was his little brother's costume. He told us why he didn't have time to get a costume of his own. But I couldn't understand him because of the big wad of bubble gum in his mouth. Walker and I had decided to be ghosts. We cut eye holes in bed sheets and armholes, and that was that. My sheet dragged behind me in the grass. I should have cut it shorter, but it was too late. We were already on our way to trick-or-treat. Where are Shauna and Shane? Lee asked. I guess we'll catch up with them, I replied. I raised my trick-or-treat bag in front of me. Let's get going. The four of us stepped out into a clear, cold night. A pale half-moon floated low over the houses. The grass shone gray under a light blanket of frost. We stopped at the bottom of my driveway. A minivan rumbled by. I saw two big dogs peering out the back window. The driver slowed down to stare at us as she passed by. Where should we start? Tabby asked. Lee mumbled something I didn't understand. I want to trick-or-treat all night, Walker exclaimed. This may be our last trick-or-treat night ever. Excuse me? What do you mean? Tabby demanded, turning her green face to him. Next year we'll be teenagers, Walker explained. We'll be too old for trick-or-treat. Kind of a sad thought. I tried to take a deep breath of cool air, but I had forgotten to cut a nose or mouth hole in the sheet. We hadn't even left the front yard, and I was already starting to feel hot. Let's start at the Willows, I suggested. The Willows is a neighborhood of small houses. It starts on the other side of a small woods, just two blocks away. Why the willows? Tabby demanded, fiddling with her tiara. Because the houses are all real close together, I told her. We won't have to walk much and we'll get a lot of candy. No long driveways to walk up and down. Sounds good, Lee agreed. We started walking along the curb. Across the street, I saw two monsters and a skeleton making their way across the front yard. Little kids followed by a father. The wind fluttered my costume as we walked. My shoes crunched over frost-covered dead leaves. 
The sky seemed to grow darker as we made our way past the bare black trees of the woods. A few minutes later, we reached the first block of the willows. Streetlights cast a warm yellow glow over the neighborhood. A lot of the houses were decorated with orange and green lights, cutouts of witches and goblins and flickering jack-o'-lanterns. The four of us began walking from house to house, gleefully yelling trick-or-treat and collecting all kinds of candy. People oohed and awed over Tabby's princess costume. She was the only one in the group who had bothered to put on a decent costume, so I guess she stood out. We passed by a lot of other kids as we made our way down the block. Most of them appeared younger than us. One kid was dressed as a milk carton. He even had all the nutritional information printed on one side. It took us about half an hour to do both sides of the street. The willows ended in a cul-de-sac, kind of a dead end. Where to next? Tabby asked. Whoa, wait, one more house, Walker said. He pointed to a small brick house set back in the trees. I didn't see that one, I said. I guess because it's the only house that isn't right on the street. The lights are on, and they've got a pumpkin in the window, Walker announced. Let's check it out. We trooped up to the front stoop and pushed the doorbell. The front door swung open instantly. A small, white-haired woman poked out her head. She squinted through thick eyeglasses at us. Trick or treat, the four of us chanted. Oh my goodness, she exclaimed. She pressed wrinkled hands against her cheeks. What wonderful costumes. Huh? Wonderful costumes, I thought. Two bedsheets and a borrowed Superman suit from last year. The old woman turned back into the house. Forest, come see this, she called. You've got to see these costumes. I heard a man cough from somewhere deep inside the house. Come in, please come in, the old woman pleaded. I want my husband to see you. She stepped back to make room for us to enter. The four of us hesitated. Come in, she insisted. Forest has to see your costumes, but it's hard for him to get up. Please. Tabby led the way into the house. We stepped into a tiny, dimly lit living room. A fire blazed in a small brick fireplace against one wall. The room felt like a blast furnace. It had to be 500 degrees in here. The woman shut the door behind us. Forest, Forest, she called. She turned to us and smiled. He's in the back room. Follow me. She opened the door and let us enter. To my surprise, the back room was enormous and jammed with kids in costumes. Whoa, I cried out, startled. My eyes quickly swept the room. Most of the kids had taken off their masks. Some of them were crying. Some of them were red-faced and angry. Several kids sat cross-legged on the floor, their expressions glum. What's going on? Tabby demanded shrilly. Her eyes bulged wide with fear. What are they all doing here? Lee asked, swallowing hard. A red-faced little man with shaggy white hair came hobbling out of the corner, leaning on a white cane. I like your costumes, he said, grinning at us. We... we have to go now, Tabby stammered. We all turned to the door. The old woman had shut it behind her. I glanced back at the kids in costumes. There were at least two dozen of them. They all looked so frightened and unhappy. We have to go, Tabby repeated shrilly. Yeah, let us out of here, Lee insisted. The old man smiled. The woman stepped up beside him. You have to stay, she said. We like to look at your costumes. You can't go, the man added, leaning heavily on his cane. We have to look at your costumes. Huh? What are you saying? How long are you going to keep us here, Tabby cried. Forever, the old couple said in unison. That was my daydream. I was down by the street in front of my house, waiting for my friends to show up, and daydreaming about Tabby and Lee being trapped by a weird old couple who liked to collect trick-or-treaters and keep them forever. Of course, in my daydream, Walker and I sneaked out the side door. But Tabby and Lee were caught before they could escape, and they were never seen again. Nice daydream, huh? I was still picturing the whole thing when Walker, Shane, and Shauna finally arrived, and we eagerly trooped inside and up to my room. Drew, why are you grinning like that? Shauna demanded, dropping down onto the edge of my bed. I was just having a very funny daydream, I told her, about Tabby and Lee. What could be funny about those two creeps? Walker demanded. He picked up a tennis ball from the floor and tossed it to Shane. The two of them started tossing the ball back and forth across my room. It was very funny, I replied, sitting up and stretching, especially the ending. I told them the whole daydream. I could see from the smiles on their faces that they enjoyed it. But Shauna scolded me. We don't have time for daydreams, Drew. We need a real plan. It's almost Halloween. Walker tossed the tennis ball too high. It smashed into my dresser lamp and knocked it over. Shane hurtled toward the lamp and made a diving catch before it hit the floor. Way to go, Walker cried. Catch of the month, he slapped Shane a high five. He hit Shane so hard the poor guy almost dropped the lamp. Grrr, I growled at Walker and pointed to the desk chair. Sit down. We have serious thinking to do. She's right, Shauna agreed. 
We have to scare Tabby and Lee out of their skins this year. We have to pay them back for the last two years. We have to. So what are we going to do? Walker demanded, dropping his long, lanky body into the desk chair. Hide behind some bushes and yell boo? Bad attitude. I've been thinking of some really scary things we could do at a party, I started. I think no party, Sean interrupted. Right, no party, your twin agreed. We worked so hard on last year's party and then Tabby and Lee didn't show up. Grr. Just thinking about last year made me growl. Well, if we don't scare them at a Halloween party, where do we scare them? Walker asked, tapping out a rhythm with his fingers on the desk. Shane and I have some really good ideas, Shauna said. Yeah, I think you have to listen to Shauna and me this year, Shane chimed in. We have a really good plan. It will have them shaking for a year, really. Walker pulled the desk chair closer. Shane sat on the floor beside him. I leaned closer to Shauna on the bed. Speaking in a low voice, just above a whisper, Shauna told Walker and me their plan. A very scary plan. It gave me a chill just hearing Shauna describe it. It's very simple, Shauna finished. Very easy to do, and there's no way it won't work. We'll give Tabby and Leah Halloween they'll never forget, Shane boasted. I mean, really, Walker murmured. I gazed at the chubby, pink-cheeked twins. They were so cute looking. So sweet and innocent. But their plan to fight in Tabby and Lee really was truly horrifying. It's mean, I agreed. And it's cruel. And it's terribly gross and shocking, I grinned. I like it. We all laughed. So we agree, Shane asked. We're doing it. We all agreed. We all solemnly shook hands. Great, Shauna declared. So true. All you have to do is invite them to come trick-or-treating with you. Shane and I will do the rest. No problem, I replied, still grinning. No problem. We all cheered and congratulated each other. We knew this was the year. Our year. Shauna started to say something else, but my mom poked her head into the room. What are the four of you plotting so seriously? Mom asked. Uh, nothing, Walker answered quickly. Just making plans for Halloween, Mom, I told her. Mom bit her lower lip. Her expression turned serious. You know, Drew, she said, shaking her head. I don't think I can let you go trick-or-treating this year. Mom, you have to let me go trick-or-treating. You have to, or else you'll spoil all our plans for revenge. Those words almost burst from my mouth, but somehow I held them in. I choked back the words and stared hard at her, trying to decide if she was serious. She was. Mom, what's wrong? I finally cried. What did I do? What am I, why am I grounded? Drew, you're not grounded, Mom laughed. I just don't think trick-or-treating is a good idea this year. Haven't you seen the news stories about the people in town who disappeared? Huh? Disappeared? My mind flashed back to my daydream. I pictured the old couple again, locking kids up in their back room. You mean kids have disappeared? I asked. Mom shook her head. No, not kids. Adults. A fourth person was reported missing yesterday. Here, look. Mom had the newspaper rolled up under her arm. She pulled it out and unrolled it. She held the front page up so we could all see it. I could read the bold black headline from across the room. Local mystery. Four have vanished. I climbed up from the bed and made my way over to Mom. I saw Shane and Shauna exchange worried glances. Walker's expression had turned solemn. He drummed his fingers tensely on the desktop. I took the newspaper from Mom and stared at the photos of the four people who had disappeared. Three men and one woman. The police are warning people to be very careful, Mom said softly. Walker walked over and took the newspaper from my hands. He studied the photos for a moment. Hey, these people are all fat, he exclaimed. Now we all clustered around the paper and stared at the gray photos. Walker was right. All four people were overweight. The first one, a bald man in a bulging turtleneck sweater, had at least six chins. Weird, I murmured. Shane and Shauna had grown strangely silent. I guessed they were frightened. Why would four fat people disappear into thin air, Walker asked. Mom sighed. That's what the police would like to know, she said. But Mom, if only adults are disappearing, why can't I go trick-or-treating, she asked. Please let Drew go, Shauna pleaded. It's our last year to go out on Halloween night. No, I don't think so, Mom replied, biting her bottom lip again. But we'll be really, really, really careful, I promised her. I don't think so, Mom repeated. I don't think so. Once again, Halloween was completely ruined. But then Dad thought maybe trick-or-treating would be okay. It was two days later. He and Mom had been discussing it nonstop. You can go out if you go in a group, Dad said. Stay in the neighborhood and don't wander away from the others, okay, Elf? Thanks, Dad, I cried. I was so happy I didn't remind him to stop calling me Elf. Instead, I surprised him with a big hug. Are you sure about this? Mom asked. Of course he is, I cried. No way was I going to let them change their minds. I was already halfway to the phone to tell Walker that our plan was back on. There would be a thousand kids trick-or-treating in the neighborhood, Dad argued. Besides, Drew and her friends are old enough and smart enough to keep out of trouble. Thanks, Dad, I cried again. 
Mom wanted to keep the discussion going, but I ran out of the kitchen and up to my room before she could get a word out. I called Walker and told him the good news. He said he would call Shane and Shauna and tell them to get ready for trick-or-treat night. Everything was set. I just had one little problem left. I had to convince Tabby and Lee that they should go trick-or-treating with us. I took a deep breath and called Tabby's house. Her mother said she was over at Lee's, helping him get his Halloween costume ready. So I hurried over to Lee's house. It was a gray Saturday afternoon. It had rained all morning, and the storm clouds still floated overhead. The front lawns shimmered from the clinging rainwater. I jumped over wide puddles on the sidewalk. I wore a heavy gray sweatsuit, but the air felt damp and cold, and I wished I had put on a jacket over it. I jogged over the last block to Lee's house, partly to warm up. I stopped to catch my breath on the front stoop, then I pushed the doorbell. A few seconds later, Lee answered the door. Whoa, I cried out when I saw his costume. He had bobbing antennas on his head. He wore a fuzzy yellow vest pulled over a black and yellow striped girl swimsuit. You, you're a bee? I stammered. He nodded. Tabby and I are still working on it. We bought black tights for my legs this morning. Cool, I said. He looked really stupid. But why should I tell him? Tabby greeted me as I stepped into the den. She had opened a package containing the tights and was stretching them out, tugging them hard between her hands. Drew, have you lost weight? She asked. Excuse me? No? Oh, I guess you like your sweatsuit baggy like that, huh? She's so mean. She turned her head away, but I saw her snicker to herself. She thinks she's really funny. Is that your costume? She asked. I decided to ignore her nasty jokes. No, I'm going to be some kind of superhero, I think, I told her. You know, wear a cape and tights. What are you going to be? A ballerina, she replied. She handed the tights to Lee. Here are your bee legs. Do you have some heavy construction paper? What for? Lee asked. We need to make a stinger, you know, to glue it to the back of your tights. No way, Lee protested. No stinger. I don't need a stinger. I'll only sit on it anyway. I let them argue for a few minutes. I kept out of it. Lee finally won. No stinger. Tabby pouted for a while and then made faces at him. She hates it when she doesn't get her way. But he's even more stubborn than she is. Listen, guys, I started. Walker and Shane and Shauna and I are all going trick-or-treating together this year. I took a deep breath then asked my question. Want to come with us? Yeah, sure. Lee replied. Okay, Tabby agreed. And that was that. The trap was set. Tabby and Lee were in for the most frightening Halloween of their lives. Unfortunately, we were too. The week dragged by. I counted the hours till Halloween. Finally, the big night arrived. I was so nervous I could barely get my superhero costume together. It wasn't much of a costume. I wore bright blue tights and a blue top. I pulled a pair of red boxer shorts over the tights. For my cape, I cut up a red tablecloth we didn't use anymore and tied it around my shoulders. Then I pulled on a pair of white vinyl boots. I had a red cardboard mask that just covered my eyes. Super Drew, I proclaimed to the mirror. I knew the costume was lame, but I didn't care. Tonight wasn't about costumes. It was about terror, and it was about scaring two kids to death. I grabbed a large brown shopping bag from the closet to use as a trick-or-treat bag. Then I scrambled down the stairs, hoping to get out of the house before running into my parents. I hoped to avoid any last-minute lectures about how I had to be careful outside. No such luck. Dad stopped me at the bottom of the stairs. Wow, great costume, Elf, he exclaimed. What are you supposed to be? Please don't call me Elf, I muttered. I tried to get past him to the front door, but he blocked my way. Just let me take one photo, he said. I'm kind of late. I told him I was supposed to meet Walker at the corner around 7.30. It was already a quarter to eight. Be careful out there, my mother called from the den. Dad disappeared to get his camera. I waited at the bottom of the stairs, tapping my hand on the banister. Don't talk to any strangers, Mom called. Very helpful. Okay, one quick shot, Dad said, returning with his camera, raised to his eye. Stand against the door. You look great, Drew. Are you Wonder Woman or something? Just a superhero, I mumbled. I've really got to go, Dad. He steadied the camera over his eye. How about a smile? I gave him a toothy grin. He clicked the shutter. Oh, wait, did it flash? He asked. I don't think I had the flash on. He examined the camera. Dad, I started. I thought about Walker standing by himself on the corner. Walker hated to wait. I knew how tense he'd be. As tense as me. Dad, I've got to meet my friends. If you see anyone suspicious, run away, Mom called from the den. Let's try again, Elf. Dad raised the camera again. Smile. He clicked the shutter. No flash. Whoa. He checked the camera again. Dad, please, I begged. Oh, wow, he murmured. Would you believe it? No film. He shook his head. I thought I had film in here. I'll go upstairs and get a roll. It'll only take a second. Dad, I screamed. The doorbell rang. It startled us both. Probably some trick-or-treaters, Dad said. I leaped to the door and pulled it open. I squinted in the yellow porch light. A boy stood there, all in black. He wore a black sweater and black pants. A black wool ski cap was pulled down over his forehead. He had black makeup covering his face, and he wore black gloves. Cute costume, Dad declared. Get him a candy bar, Drew. I groaned. Dad, it's not a trick-or-treater. It's Walker. I pushed open the storm door so that Walker could come in. 
I thought you were going to meet me, he said. Dad stared at Walker's all-black costume. What are you supposed to be? He asked. A dark and stormy night, Walker replied. Huh? Where's the stormy part? I asked. Here, Walker replied. He raised a black plastic water pistol and squirted me in the face. Dad burst out laughing. He thought that was a riot. He called Mom in from the den to take a look. We're never getting out of here, I whispered to Walker. We're gonna miss Tabby and Lee. We had the whole night planned out, down to the minute, but now the whole plan could be ruined. I had a knot in my stomach. I could feel it tightening. The cape suddenly felt as if it were choking me. Mom and Dad were admiring Walker's costume. A dark and stormy night. Very clever, Mom said. But how will anyone see you in the dark? You'd better be careful crossing the street. Mom had advice for everyone tonight. I couldn't take it anymore. We've got to go. Bye, I said. I shoved Walker out the door and followed right behind him. Mom called out more warnings from the house, but I couldn't hear her. I pulled Walker down the driveway and we hurried toward the corner. That's where we were supposed to meet Tabby and Lee, our two victims. You should have stayed on the corner, I scolded Walker. Maybe Tabby and Lee were here and already left. But you were so late, Walker protested. I thought maybe something was wrong. My heart was thumping. The knot in my stomach grew even tighter. Okay, okay, I urged. Let's just calm down. It was a clear, cold night. A light frost made the lawn silvery. Overhead, a silver moon rested near a cluster of bright stars. Most of the houses on the block had their lights on. I saw two groups of little trick-or-treaters across the street. They were all hurrying up to the same house. A dog barked excitedly in the house next door. I turned my eyes to the corner where we were supposed to meet Tabby and Lee. No one there. Walker and I stopped under a street light. I adjusted my cape. It really was choking me. I saw that I hadn't cut it short enough. The bottom was soaked from dragging along the ground. Where are they? I demanded. You know they're always late, Walker replied. He was right. Tabby and Lee loved to keep people waiting for them. They'll be here any second, Walker said. A tall hedge ran along the corner yard. Walker started pacing back and forth from the hedge to the curb. His outfit was so black, when he stepped into the shadow of the hedge, he completely disappeared. Can you stop pacing? I started, but my voice caught in my throat when I heard a cough. From the other side of the hedge. A low, gruff cough. Not a human cough. More like an animal growl. I turned and saw that Walker had heard it too. He stopped pacing and stared at the hedge. I heard a scraping sound. The hedge appeared to shiver. Who, who's back there? I choked out. The hedge shook again, shook and cracked. Hey, who is it? Walker cried. Silence. The hedge shook harder this time. Is this a joke or something? Walker demanded in a trembling voice. Another low animal growl. No, I cried out as two ugly creatures came snarling through the hedge. I saw only a blur of ragged fur, open jaws, saliva-covered teeth. Before I could move, one of the creatures leaped onto me, snarling and growling. It shoved me roughly down to the grass and dug its fangs into my shoulder. I let out a shrill wail of pain. I tried to scramble to my feet, but the snarling creature had me pinned to the ground. Stop! Stop! I struggled to squirm free as the creature tugged my cape over me, covering me like a blanket. Hey! I heard Walker's angry shout, but I couldn't see what was happening to him. No! Let me go, I shrieked. With a frantic burst of energy, I reached up one hand and swiped at the creature's drooling face. To my shock, the whole face pulled off easily. A mask. I held a rubber mask in my hand. I stared up at the grinning face. It took me a few moments to recognize the boy. Todd Jeffrey. Yes, Todd Jeffrey, the high school kid who had frightened us all at Lee's party two years ago. Odd, I murmured. I frantically pulled the cape away from my face. Gotcha. Gotcha good, he whispered. He let go of me and stood up. You creep, I cried angrily. I tossed the rubber mask in his face. He caught it in one hand and laughed. Drew, can't you take a joke? Huh? A joke? A joke? I screamed. I climbed to my feet and furiously began brushing myself off. My cape was totally tangled and covered in wet brown leaves. Walker had been wrestling with the other creature. The guy pulled off his mask. Of course it was Joe, Todd's disgusting friend. Hope we didn't scare you, he teased. He and Todd laughed like hyenas. They fell all over each other, slapping high fives and low fives. Before I could tell them what jerks they were, I heard more laughter. To my surprise, Tabby and Lee came stepping out from behind the hedge, and all four of them enjoyed a good laugh together. Grrr, I uttered a furious growl. At that moment, I wished I really were a superhero. I wanted to plow my super fists into their laughing faces, or maybe spread my cape and fly away, far away, so I wouldn't have to see any of them anymore. Happy Halloween, Drew, Tabby called smugly. Happy Halloween, Tabby and Lee repeated in unison, grinning their disgusting grins. How long were you and Lee standing back there, I demanded angrily. Long enough, Lee snickered. He and Tabby both burst out laughing again. We were standing back there the whole time, Tabby declared. I love Halloween, don't you? I growled under my breath, but I didn't say anything. 
keep cool drew i instructed myself tabby and lee and their two high school buddies played a little joke on you but they won't have the last laugh when the night is over i told myself walker and i will be the ones who are laughing when shane and shauna arrive we are going to terrify them truly terrify them todd and joe had pulled their monster masks back on they tilted back their heads and howled like wolves Todd's mask was really gross. It had rubber saliva dripping over long, pointed fangs. They're not coming trick-or-treating with us, are they? I asked Tubby. She shook her head. She adjusted the tiara on top of her blonde hair. No way, Tom replied from behind the ugly mask. Joe and I are too old to trick-or-treat, especially with you crybabies. Then why are you wearing those monster costumes, Walker demanded. Just to scare kids, Joe replied. He and Todd laughed again, loud, cruel laughs. Joe grabbed my mask and pulled it down over my chin. Todd rubbed the back of his hand over Walker's cheek, smearing the black makeup. Then they ran off to find some other victims. The creeps. I was glad to see them go. I stood watching them, making sure they didn't change their minds and come back. Nice guys, Lee said. He set his orange and black trick-or-treating bag down on the grass. Then he adjusted his bee antennas. I heard kids laughing across the street. I turned and saw a group of four kids, all monsters and goblins, running up the driveway to a house. Let's get going, Tabby said. It's kind of cold. Aren't Shane and Shauna supposed to meet us? Lee asked. Yeah, they'll catch up to us, I said. I crossed the street and started toward the first house. A tall, brightly lit brick house with a smiling pumpkin cut out in the front window. As we made our way up the gravel driveway, I glanced at my watch. And nearly gasped. Nearly 8.15. Shane and Shauna were supposed to meet us on the corner at 8. Where were they? They were never late. Never. I swallowed hard. Was this Halloween about to be ruined, too? Had something gone wrong? 